This is an aerial view of the Kodiak tracking station. These are the best of my recollections after about 43 years. If you see a UD on top of the image, um, it means undated. That means I didn't take the picture and I don't know when it was from. A group of us guys from DeVry in Chicago were trained at the Satellite Test Center on all the equipment we were going to work on up in Alaska and also on the Agena uh, second stage rocket and uh, satellite button. This is one of the fine certificates we received after we completed our training. We supported the CIA's uh, reconnaissance satellites, codenamed Corona. They had ejectable filled canisters that could be recovered. The Gina, the small section on the left, was used for many different type payload. Kodiak tracking station, codenamed Cody, sat above Cape Chiniac. Here is one of the warning signs that they place around the area, and then a picture of me in front of the operations center. This is the radar tower I worked on, and the dish you can see at the top, and then later, uh, while I was there, it always had this dome cover on top of it. The single helix antenna under the word antenna sent commands to the satellites. I also maintained the flat plane array antenna. It is located inside a pressurized rubber dome. This is the actual flat plane array antenna inside the dome. We had a um, blowout of the uh, elevation motor on this antenna during uh, satellite operations. So somebody had the bright idea of pulling the antenna around and positioning with ropes, which we did. We tied ropes on the top and bottom of this big plane and then positioned it up and down uh, using people inside the rubber dome and ran that way for a couple weeks. The Borsite Tower was used to align the antennas with a terrestrial location. And it was a pretty nasty climb, especially in the winter if it was all caked with ice. I made one climb up the tower on my own just to see if I could do it and was pretty damn scared when I got to the top. This is the systems control console, three operators, and they would control the pass. Uh, they would monitor the systems and also send commands from these consoles. There were two control data computers, one for tracking and command and the other for data acquisition. This was part of the computer data operations area and there were other equipment behind it as well. This is the radar operations area where I worked. There were uh, four operators and one controller standing behind them. Um, the, the scope, you can see that right above the chair. Um, we could also send commands directly to the satellite from this location as well as a backup in case the other uh, main console failed. Two radar operators uh, sat by this console. Uh, another person was in charge of the recordings that were all going on during the pass. And then another person was sitting by the uh, atomic clocks that, was in a, that were in another section as we maintained those as well. Once a month or so, we got to send commands directly to the satellite from our radar operator's console, just ensuring that the backup method of sending the commands was working. It was pretty uh, intense while this was going on for us. This is where the signals from the flat plane array antenna were recorded. Uh, the satellite also recorded communications uh, in wherever uh, uh, it was commanded to do so, along with the photographing. There were eight diesel generators that powered the station. Uh, now you can see a dome that's on top of the uh, command transmitter. That's the way it looked when I was there. Uh, and then the maintenance garages, that's where I used to wash my car. Um, one uh, interesting story is we were in the cafeteria one night and we could see the lights starting to dim and we heard the generators just bogging down. And all of a sudden, somebody was standing over by the counter, and he said, I wonder what this will do. And he pushed down on the toaster, and the whole pay place went pitch black. This shows the rear of the main building. Uh, there were three wings of rooms that came out. 
uh, that uh, you were assigned to when you got there, uh, one of the rooms. And um, then if you wanted to, you could go to a trailer if one became available, uh, which I got uh, to go to after a little while. Most of the people here were very friendly the whole time I was there. I had no problems, but sometimes people would just disappear. If you did something bad enough, and I'm not sure exactly what that would be, drugs maybe, uh, and they caught you, you'd just disappear. And then the next day, someone would come in and pack up all your stuff, and nobody would know what happened. For one period of five weeks, we had fog so thick that you couldn't see anywhere and we had to have ropes tied between the buildings to go back and forth to when we worked outside and went to our trailers. This was our bar Casa de Toro which is the house of the bull and it was located just a few feet from the operations center. Very handy and um, th it was a great money maker and it could never show a profit so we always used up all the money uh, and once a month, well, they would fly in pizza from Seattle, and uh, of course we'd have to reheat it, but it was a very popular night in the bar. This is a picture behind the bar, and that's Mike Millette. He was one of my trainers who taught me bartending. While I worked there, I was a bartender part-time for quite a bit of the time. A friend of mine, uh, Dave, who was one of the system controllers, had his own airplane. You can see it taking off from the... Uh, metal airstrip we had about a mile from the station. He took me up to do some phot photographs of the place and also gave me my first and only flying lesson. Life was tough, but it was tougher on cars. Bud Wilson and I uh, we were driving my car up from Iowa after Thanksgiving and we came across this wreck on the Alcan Highway. The people were already gone there. If you run across a wreck, you have to pick the people up and take them to the nearest hospital. Now back in Kodiak Island, um, I had my 68 Dodge Coronet RT. If you miss a meeting, you're elected vice president while you're on vacation. New computer equipment arrived that year. If you wanted a good parking space, you had to dig one out by yourself. To pass the time, we had a recording studio set up in our trailer and would get free tape from the Air Force because they only used the tape 20 times. Getting back and forth to town always had its challenges. Lots of roads washed out and flooding. In May of 69, um, we heard Apollo 10 was at the moon, so we decided to try to track it with the new signals gear we had at the station. We were only able to hear the astronauts' voices, not anything from NASA itself. So NASA hooked us up with a controller at uh, the Mission Control, and they piped in the uh, sound back here at the Kodiak tracking station. At May or July, we had a beach uh, picnic and uh, these are some of the pictures of some of the people that attended that night. We were asked to film an event, uh, that something coming in over the station, and when the people that did had their cameras taken away and all the film taken, and some of them got their cameras back. Putting the car on the boat to leave for the mainland. <laughs> 